Hello everyone, Neil back with another quick film review for you, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the highly acclaimed The Banshees of Inishirin, directed by Martin McDonough, who also directed the same two leads, Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, in another highly acclaimed film called In Bruges back in 2008. And spoiler alert! Of course, there will be spoilers. I'm going to spoil the whole thing. So you've been warned, although this movie's been out for a little while now, of course, and I'm just reviewing it because of all the uh, nominations and everything, the awards, the Golden Globes, and the Oscars, and all that stuff. So it's uh, made a lot of people's top ten list, a lot of people's number one uh, film of the year, in fact. Uh, although it's fairly unpleasant <laughs> to watch at times, and uh, it's very dark. It's not going to please everyone, you know, going to the theater or, or wanting to rent it or watch it for a good time, you know, it's not going to leave you with a smile on your face, I don't think, it's it's a pretty sad movie, I gotta say. Uh, it is a very, very strange story uh, with some brilliant moments, but also some, some bizarre moments for me. Uh, the story seems to really be going nowhere at first, uh, but uh, eventually you see that this story is really more about the characters and uh, the emotions they invoke, uh, as it is about two friends that are feuding with each other and things escalate to the point of tragedy. So, it's a very interesting story. It is set on the fictional island in Ireland in 1923, so 100 years ago, at the uh, end of the Irish uh, Civil War, and it stars Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, of course, and their two friends on an island with so very few people, yet uh, Gleason's character, Calm, uh, he's he's tired of Farrell's character, Podrick, calling him dull and annoying. So Calm doesn't want anything to do with Podrick anymore, and this obviously is going to disturb Podrick quite a bit. Now, forgive any uh, not-so-good pronunciations here. The Irish names aren't so easy <laughs> to pronounce. Um, so... He just doesn't want to be friends anymore. So, pretty crummy thing uh, to do your friend, especially on a small island where there's not a lot of people, not a lot of friends there anyway. Um, you know, Brendan Gleeson's character is this uh, composer, a violinist that, uh, you know, is very revered around the island. People love him, but uh, but he just he just doesn't want to hang around with Podrick anymore. So, it bothers Podrick to the point where he, you know, has to start a conversation with Colm and say, well, what's the matter? Why don't you like me anymore? What's going on? I don't get it. You know, and he's trying to figure it out. He's trying to, to get back into good graces and be friends with him again, you know, but, uh, but, but Colm's not having any of it, you know, and it escalates to the point where, um, <laughs> Colm gets so annoyed that he threatens to cut off his fingers for every time that, uh, that, that Colin Farrell's character, Podrick, uh, annoys him. And he actually makes good on that promise, uh, as at one point Farrell bugs him and he winds up chopping off his his finger and he throws it at his door and you know just freaks everybody out it's uh kind of gross but hey he made good on his promise you know he's a man of his word that's for sure uh carrie condon plays uh colin farrell's character's sister and uh she's had enough of this island there's nothing on the island for her you know there's, there's really nothing there you know uh, i think sometimes the, the lesson of this movie is don't move to an island because there's no jobs um but that's the case here 100 years ago in 1923 where she is just so miserable uh living there uh being this farmer um uh, you know they've got cows and they've got a donkey and you know and like it's a very small tiny little uh, irish farm i guess and she's miserable and another actor, another character here we have is uh, Barry Keegan. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Uh, he actually played the Joker at the end of The Batman. And you could barely see him, of course. But uh, well, that's an interesting reference. You know, he was also in Dunkirk and other things like that. Highly acclaimed actor. And he plays this character who is uh, uh, Dominic that's uh, uh, just, just really, really... Um, just a tragic character because you think he's 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 quite an idiot at first, but then you later realize you know he's he's suffering a lot of abuse at the hands of his policeman father, and by the end of the film he winds up killing himself. So yeah, not a happy movie, folks. <laughs> like I said, um, so eventually the sister does take off and she goes to the mainland in search of better work, of course. And uh, Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, though, I mean, things escalate to the point where Gleeson winds up chopping off the rest of his fingers on his left hand, and he throws all the fingers at, at Colin Farrell's door again, and then tragedy strikes, because one of the fingers winds up in the mouth of the donkey. The donkey picks up the finger, eats it, chokes on it, and dies. And that scene where the donkey dies, 
The donkey's name is Jenny. It's one of the most heart-wrenching scenes I have ever seen in a movie. It's the most tragic, and it may be just because it's animal death, too. You know, like any kind of animal death in any way is always going to get me a little teary-eyed. You know, I hate seeing animal death in TV shows and, and movies, um, you know, when it's this tragic. But this one is is a little different. This one's just pure sad. It doesn't anger at all. It just It's just pure sadness. It's just like... Oh my God! It's just oh, it, it really breaks your heart. Uh, that scene and 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 Farrell's performance when he realizes you know what's happened is is unbelievable. It's it's so great. Brendan Gleeson's uh, Colm, you know, he feels bad about that. He didn't intend to kill the donkey, of course. You know, he just wanted to ignore his friends because he's a jerk and that's it. And um, <laughs> you know, so I guess in the end, uh, what happens here is is that Colin Farrell's character actually winds up trying to burn down. Uh, Brendan Gleeson's house and uh, sparing the dog, of course, you know, the border collie He's not going to hurt the, the dog, but um, <laughs> but uh, but he sets the house on fire with uh, Colm inside the house as it's going on fire. And he's very calm. He's like, eh, whatever, you know, I'm going to die. No big deal. It's just like, OK, you know, um, very, very dark. And uh, but he does escape. Uh, Brendan Gleeson's character does not die. Um, and they just kind of wind up on the beach together at the end with the dog, and they just kind of look out and reflect, um, you know. And it's just it's kind of so bizarre, you know. It's such an original, interesting kind of story. I give it marks for some of its creativity, certainly. Um, but I don't know. This story just didn't really do it for me. I, I know this movie is on a lot of people's top ten lists. It's number one on some people's lists of best movies of last year. But I just think, you know you got to be prepared for this movie, first of all. You can't go into it going, well, I'm going to feel good after coming out of this. No, you're going to feel like crap. You know, when the movie ended, I felt like crap after this. I was like, wow. The lesson of this movie is that sometimes friends get sick of each other or, or one friend gets sick of another and, and dumps them. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is that, was that the moral of the story? I, I just didn't really... The story just didn't resonate with me very, very much. And, you know, the idea of, of, of two, you know, intense Irishmen escalating matters like this it's just i don't know it just doesn't really work for me you know uh it is interesting it's certainly different but uh for me this movie was all about the cinematography the direction you know the editing and especially the acting um the music's beautiful everything about this movie is wonderful the only thing is that the story for me like i said just it's just kind of a dull story and it just doesn't do much it doesn't go far enough in my opinion you know in terms of of things that they could have done they, they kept it very basic um and again it's it's a downer too and i can't i can't i guess i can't really you know knock it for being a downer it's like saying oh schindler's list was no good because it was a downer no i mean like you know downer movies can be brilliant you know sophie's choice and all these other movies that you know are not pleasant watches but they are brilliantly made and and deserve the accolades but Again, you're you're just not going to come out of the theater or off your couch, you know, watching this feeling good. You're going to feel like, wow, such brilliant performances, but that story made me feel like crap. So I'm going to give this movie, The Banshees of Inishirin, an 8 out of 10. So strong on the acting, cinematography, direction, everything. Just the story wasn't so great for me. Just my opinion. I want to know what you thought about this movie. Please comment in the comment box below uh, when you do get a chance to see this film, if you haven't already, um, because it is worth watching one time at least. You know, I call it a wow, a W-O-W, -W, a worthy one-time watcher. Um, but I have no desire to see it again, you know? I'd probably give it a higher score if I did, but I don't. So, 8 out of 10. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this quick review. And until next time, peace.